Carbon-14 is formed in the upper atmosphere through the effect of cosmic ray neutrons hitting upon nitrogen-14. Other species of carbon are also formed in this process, including carbon-12 and carbon-13. All of these forms of carbon, both the radioactive atom, 14C, as well as these non-radioactive counterparts, 12C and 13C, are all absorbed by plants and living matter. During its life, a terrestrial plant or animal is in equilibrium with its surroundings by exchanging carbon either with the atmosphere or through its diet. It will therefore have the same proportion of 14C as the atmosphere during its life, or in the case of marine animals or plants, the same proportion of 14C with the ocean. Now, once a plant or animal dies, it ceases to acquire 14C. Rather, the 14C within its biological material at the time will continue to decay. As a result, the ratio of 14C to 12C in its remains will gradually decrease. Because 14C decays at a known rate, the proportion of 14C can be used to determine how long it's been since a given sample stopped exchanging carbon with the older the sample, the less 14C that will be left. Now this left plot shows the decay of 14C over time after death. You have time in the number of half-lives on the x-axis and percentage of carbon-14 remaining on the y-axis. You can see the quantity of 14C decreases over time. Now this diagram is a simplified version of the process. It's actually much more complicated in reality because the level of 14C has not always been consistent in the atmosphere. It's actually varied over time. And because of this, the starting value of 14C is different depending when the organism was living, and therefore the amount remaining varies as well. In order to be able to accurately calculate 14C decay and therefore age over time, we have to understand how this 14C has varied over time and base our calculations on this. In order to do this, a radiocarbon calibration curve has been developed by measuring 14C on biological archives of known age.